or in the church. People don't like to be in there. But we have some brave people, yeah. Please come in. There's a lot of space here. Ja, Lina, dan moet je toch echt op de voorste rij zitten. Please come in. Please come in. Ja, find a seat. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are extremely happy to welcome you at the Sun Movement Nutrition Hub. We all know that you are here for the uh, important World Health Assembly. And as we, uh, as we heard, it started well this morning. Uh, and you will have a long week ahead. But is my micro working? Is my micro work? Yes, it's, it's doing gr great. My name is Gerda Verberg. I'm the coordinator of the Scaling Up Nutrition. And uh, each and all of you, in one way or the other, has, uh, have something to do with the Sun Movement. Um, I recognize some uh, uh, people of our civil society uh, network from country. I uh, certainly uh, uh, notice that there are uh, several representatives of uh, government. Um, secretary generals and uh, we also have people from other sectors but we are very happy to welcome you here because um, we have organized this uh, this sun movement <coughs> nutrition hub to have a place to stop by to enjoy good food and good drinks and some of you are doing this already and some will be able to uh, continue or to start and to also taste if you are the sun movement and you're about nutrition then you have to uh, make sure that the nutrition is taken uh, uh, well care of but we also wanted to take the opportunity to organize some informal exchanges always dealing with nutrition but we don't have official panels we don't allow speeches we do want to avoid people reading out uh, statements because that will happen uh, uh, a lot during this week but here we want to have an exchange what is happening as at country level how can we work together how can we improve uh, nutrition, what can we learn from each other, how can we build a network in order to improve collaboration, but also how can we tackle, uh, how can we tackle the multiple burden of malnutrition. Because to give you a little bit of background on the uh, scaling up nutrition movement, it's now 2018 um, and our movement started in 20 10, under the recognition that uh, nutrition is not an issue that can be only dealt with by the Minister of Health. Of course, it is impacting health, but um, you do not only find a solution if you involve the Minister of Health. So what other, what, what other ministers, ministries do we need? For, for instance, the Minister of um, the Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, the Minister of Social Protection, the Minister of Education. And it depends, of course, on which, uh, how many uh, ministers you have and what, what uh, kind of departments you have in a country. But uh, nutrition was recognized as a challenge that has to be tackled in a multi-sectoral way. It's not only uh, um, every, all departments uh, working in their own uh, pillar, but it's also working together in a harmonized, in a multi-sectoral uh, approach. Beside this, the uh, initiators and um, um, the initiator, initiators and recognize that it's not only a matter of having the governance uh, right, having the government uh, involved. They also, also notice that you need, need the different stakeholders in society. You need the civil society to work together, to do advocacy, but also to do capacity building and to be part of the implementation uh, of better nutrition. You need the private sector to become uh, instead of part of the, of the problem, part of the solution for better nutrition, both in the field of uh, undernutrition as well as in the field of um, obesity and NCDs. Most welcome, please walk in and uh, take your chair. It was reserved for you. 
thank you that you could make it and most welcome in this, in this nutrition hub. And I was just elaborating uh, what the founding fathers and mothers of the Sun movement meant when they started the movement in 2010. It's multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholders. You need civil society, you need private sector to become part of the solution instead of uh, continuing to be part of the problem. You need the UN working as one, have a coherent approach on uh, nutrition, but you also need donors and investors to align themselves and to work in a coherent uh, way, not just continuing to run their own projects and programs. So that is why the uh, Sun Movement uh, was started. And right now, um, 60 countries are member, and uh, several of you are representing representing uh, one of these uh, countries, 60 countries who drafted a letter of commitment and said, okay, we want to do something about uh, nutrition, under nutrition, but more and more countries also uh, notice that they have a prevalence of obesity and NCDs, and they also want to tackle the, uh, this multiple burden of malnutrition. 60 countries plus three Indian states um, are a member of the Scaling Up Nutrition and more countries are knocking on our door. What do they do if they uh, become a member of the Sun Movement? They want to take ownership, ownership to work themselves, to get their act together in the field of uh, nutrition and they want support from other countries with a little bit more experience already in how to bring different departments uh, together. I've been a minister myself in the Netherlands. I, mean, I was the Minister of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality in the Netherlands. And I can recall how difficult it is to bring the different departments together and make them work together. To do this, you need to have focal points. Focal point, one focal point, uh, that's the ideal situation. One focal point who is able to have the political um, the political power to bring the different uh, departments together and one technical focal point, often positioned in the Department of Health, but sometimes also in the Department of Agriculture or Food or in another the, the other department. So um, that is why when countries, uh, uh, when they become a member, we start to work with them. To do this important uh, work, we have our country liaison team, who is based in this uh, Sun Movement Secretariat. Please raise your finger and uh, call your name. Who's here from the country liaison team? Yeah, Francisca. Working with which countries? I'm working with a portfolio of countries in Latin America, Africa, Africa, uh, Asia as well, so we mentioned 20 countries. 20 countries, yeah, okay. 20 countries right now, normal is that we have 10 countries, but we are looking for two new colleagues to uh, join our country liaison team. So if you have aspiration, if you have an ambition, you can uh, make an application, I hope. Yeah, other member of the Sun country liaison team. And we have one other team in the in the room. Yes, please stand up. You're doing a very good translation work, interpretation. Yeah. Je peux le dire en français? Oui. oui. Donc je m'appelle Ophélie et je travaille avec Morgane et uh, les, les pays francophones d'Afrique ainsi que quelques pays uh, anglophones. Thank you very much, Ophélie. So this is the country liaison team, and they work with the people in country, and they are very important. We also have networks, and one of the networks is here in, one of the networks is here, where's the micro, where's the micro? Yeah, one of the networks representatives is here. Um, civil society, please introduce yourself and tell in a minute what you're doing. Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm from the Sun Civil Society uh, Secretariat based at Save the Children, but we've got a big team of members of our network, which is now in 40 countries. We have civil society networks made up of 3,000 member organizations. So that includes INGOs such as Save the Children, World Vision, HKI, which we have representatives here from today, but also really small community organizations who are working every day with the people who are affected most by hunger and malnutrition. 
So I think that's the really key thing about civil society, is that we help to ensure that policies, plans, and all the things that we're working on at a national level reach those who are most impacted um, by malnutrition. And you came with a delegation. Who is representing yes. a civil society organization here? And from which country? Stand up and take the floor, please. My name is Hu Kran from uh, Helen Keller International, Cambodia. And I am here representing, uh, you know, San CSA Cambodia, but also, you know, partly for HKI because HKI is the chair organization for the San uh, CSA in Cambodia. All, yeah, okay, please stand up. Uh, nice to meet you all. I'm Dilka Piris from Sri Lanka, works for World Vision, and uh, I'm from the uh, Sun Civil Society Network of Sri Lanka. As the chairperson, I work for with the uh, Sun members. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so hi, my name is Donna Kapili. I'm actually from the Philippines. I am with a national level NGO. We're called Health of the Mother and Child, or KMI. We're actually a group of physicians, uh, like myself. I'm a pediatrician neonatologist, but I've actually shifted gears now into public health. And so we're working hand in hand, not only for nutrition and breastfeeding, but also for standard care and newborn health, as well as maternal health. So it's really an integrated approach that we advocate and that we're working closely with in the communities. Well, I am Sultana. I come from Bangladesh Civil Society Alliance. Keep the micro well, closer to your mouth. Uh, as well as I am also one of the members of the um, a steering group of the Global Civil Society Network for Sun. Um, and we have, I have, in fact, our group, we have created the Civil Society Alliance of Sun. There was no Civil Society Alliance in Bangladesh before Sun came in. And so, and I have been since uh, to 2010 when Sun, uh, uh, society, Sun movement started. So I'm still there. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're there from the very beginning. Um, in our uh, Sun Movement Secretariat, we have part of this villa. Eh? So it's not that you think that we are Host, that we are uh, housed in, that we are occupying this whole villa. We share this, uh, this villa in a modest uh, way with several other organizations, but we're very proud to be here and to uh, support country uh, systems. Part of the of country uh, uh, teams, because it has to happen in countries. We also have the, uh, our uh, team of communication uh, here with us. Uh, please raise your hand. Who are here from the, from the country? Yeah, I see four hands here. Four, five hands I should see. All right, very good. Um, they have uh, organized uh, a lot of this, uh, of this meeting, but what I wanted to ask one of the, of the team is what you can mean for teams at country level. Is somebody able to explain this? What can you mean for Sun Movement country teams at country level? Thank, thanks, Gerda. Um, so my name's Edwin, I manage the, uh, the advocacy and communication team here at the Sun Secretariat. I think over the last few years we've really tried to support um, country delegations to be able to communicate more about nutrition, why nutrition's uh, a fundamental pillar of achieving the sustainable development goals. Uh, we can provide technical support in relation to advocacy, engaging with parliamentarians, working with high-level officials in government, as well as reaching out to different sectors as well. Part of the team here manages the Sun Movement website, and um, the Sun website has 60 unique pages to it, uh, representing all the member countries of the Sun Movement. And we really want to build these pages of the Sun Movement website as your own country home pages to showcase your nu nutrition plans, your nutrition policies, and the progress and challenges in different countries. So from time to time, um, if you're willing and able, reach out to me, reach out to any one of the Sun team members here, and we'd love to document your stories, your progress, your challenges on the Sun Movement website, and also to better support your communication needs at country level too, to make sure that high-level moments for nutrition in, uh, in Lesotho, in Mali, in Madagascar, in any other country, can be really important moments for nutrition, and we're here to support that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edwin. Um, 
Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for uh, joining uh, us. We don't want to make it uh, long, but we want to get some questions uh, answered. Um, let me first put, an, uh, put a question uh, here, and then later on we make a, a, a round and then see whether you have questions. Um, who is representing uh, a Sun Movement country here? I noticed the, the delegation of Lesotho, so please raise your hand. Yeah, you see? Congo, Congo, Brazzaville. Sierra Leone, yes, you all, you're also representing Sierra Leone. Are there other country representatives? Yes. Niger. Yeah, Niger, most welcome. More? Okay, Is there, are there donors, uh, Sun Movement donors who, rep, who are, yes, 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 raise your hand. No, no? Okay, 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 okay. Are there UN organizations in this room? Yeah, I noticed at least one, two UN organizations. WFP, yeah, WFP, WHO. WHO, WHO. okay, most welcome. Right, before I give the uh, floor or ask a question to um, one of the organizations that also support the Sun Movement uh, uh, countries in a technical way on request because we operate demand driven, I would like to see whether uh, one of you has a question or some of you have uh, questions. Is there a question? At the end of this meeting we do a test, a kind of quiz, what you know about uh, the Sun Movement. Please, sir, introduce yourself and, and ask your question or make your statement. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dan Jones from WaterAid. I'm here with my colleagues Nash from WaterAid Ghana, Annie from WaterAid Malawi. Uh, so really good to be here. Um, I'm, I mean, the reason we're here is to learn as much as we can about the Sun Movement. <laughs> and how we can engage uh, at both global level and country level. So I'd be really interested to hear from any of the country level people about the extent to which WASH actors, water, sanitation and hygiene, is brought into your sun movement at country level. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a question. You, can, you might think about it whether you want to raise your flag and answer the question or you, whether you have another question. Are there more questions? Are there more questions to come in? David, do we have already questions? From not yet, here's somebody who has a question. So uh, in Cambodia, the civil society are trying to uh, work with the government to support the government in the... Uh, Look around, eh? you're talking to the whole room. Yes. Yes. Uh, in the development of uh, the next five year national strategy for food security and nutrition. And that is uh, something very important because we want to engagement from different uh, sector, as you said, you know, is nutrition is uh, required uh, multiple sector. So I would like to ask, you know, in, in other country, you know, like when the nutrition policies in place, how can the government could invest to support that, uh, you know, uh, nutrition policy? Because in Cambodia, that is one of the problems, you know, we have the policy, but then th there's no money that the government uh, set aside for the implementations. Yeah. Is there somebody eager to answer this question? If not, let me share um, our experience with this question, because it's a very valid question and it's coming up everywhere. Together with ownership, and this is a change, I mean, with the Sustainable Development Goals, the whole UN, which means about 200 countries, have embraced the idea of country ownership, which means that the government for implementation of Agenda 2030, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, had to be ready to be in the driver's seat. Now, ownership comes with investment from the domestic budget. If, as a government, you uh, think that it is important to invest in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, you'd best start with investment in nutrition because it's the basis for better health, it's the basis for better uh, productivity, it's the, it's the basis for better education, it's the basis for almost better everything. But then you have to make sure that you invest from the domestic budget. And for many countries, 
it's impossible to do the costing of the whole 100% of the national nutrition plan. But if a government in one of the Sun Movement countries uh, decide to take this ownership and to build it on investment from the domestic budget, experience learns us that external investors are more likely to align and also invest. Let me give you the example of Ivory Coast. The government said, um, we want to be in the driving seat and we are aware that then we also have to invest from our domestic budget. But we are still a developing uh, uh, country and we cannot pay for 100%. But we want to make clear that we are serious in investment in uh, uh, nutrition. So we pay 15%, 15%, 1-5% of uh, the investment uh, in nutrition and we want other investors to come in and to align with our plans and not continue to drive their own priorities and their own projects and programs. So World Bank, please align with us. African Development Bank, and in the case of Asia, of course, the Asian Development Bank, please align. Donors, please come together and don't continue to have your own priorities and your own programs and projects. That's the idea, and that is how it should work, and that is also where we can be very supportive from our end. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the idea, and it's a step-by-step -step, uh, approach. And you know what happened in uh, Ivory Coast? In Ivory Coast, uh, one day, 13 ministers signed the multi-sectoral approach, which is a lot of ministers, but nutrition was at the heart of the national development plan. And the, one day later, they had a pledging conference where they invited all donors and, uh, and other investors. And within two weeks after that meeting, they were able to cover 90% uh, of all the uh, investments in nutrition for the next four years. That's how a miracle can start to happen. Right. More questions? If there are no, not more questions, yes. Lesotho. Yeah. Lesotho, please. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm Masi Kwanyela Sebota. I'm the, from the Food and Nutrition Coordinating Office which is for, uh, under the Prime Minister's office. Here with me, I am with the Principal Secretary, and I am with the Honorable uh, Deputy Minister in, in Cabinet. And uh, this really shows uh, the commitment in Lesotho at a, a, a higher level, at a policy-making level, because they are here with us to show the support that they are, they are giving us from the country at, uh, uh, under the Prime Minister's office. Um, we have uh, the networks, we have established the network, network. So my interest uh, from this uh, meeting or the days to come is to find out how really do we bring them together because we try to establish the, 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 the networks, but the problem is that they are not effective. They don't come to the meetings. We don't have uh, effective uh, networks at all, especially the business. Uh, network and the civil society. So uh, um, we are here to learn how do you bring them, how do we make them uh, effective, how do we make those networks to work at, at country level. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, most welcome with your delegation. We, uh, we, we um, visited your beautiful country uh, uh, last year and I recognized uh, both people, but I, I know that the uh, Prime Minister promised to make this a, a priority and it's very good that you could make it. Would you like to take the floor or would you like to take the floor after? After, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can also, yeah. Madam, please. Um, mine is yeah, it's working. Mine is not really a question, it's just a comment to add to what my colleague from Cambodia said in terms of investing in nutrition. What we're doing in Sierra Leone, we know we signed and there is high level commitment because the Sun Secretariat is in the Vice President's office. But sometimes when it comes to implementation, having resources for implementation, that is a different story because we don't always get that. 
But then it's high level, we have all the donors, and not that many donors for nutrition. So what we're trying to do now, we have a very good civil society network. So we're using the civil society network and the parliamentarians to kind of add pressure to the high level so that we can get what we want. And the parliamentarians have been very, very cooperative now that they know what SON is about, that we need to scale up to get different results so that we can combat malnutrition. I think this is helping. But to get the parliamentarians, we first of all have to get the civil society. So with those two folds, we're now seeing that the government will seriously take their commitment seriously and start investing in nutrition. And like you said, once they get into that, then the donors too would be more likely to invest. Because we notice in my country, nutrition is heavily donor funded. So we're now trying to get government to make their own commitment so that we can have more donors in nutrition. That's how it works. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the inspiring example. That's exactly how it, how it should work. Please, here's a question and then I, we go to, I have another question. Yeah. I, I don't know if I can speak in French because uh, uh, it's better. Uh, <laughs> Better to speak and, French. And, and, yeah. and, and, and for all of you, you hear some people with soft uh, voices. They, they are very, uh, very servicing uh, uh, as, a, let as me a try. interpreter. Let yes, me let try. me try. My question is not a question, but to, to know if uh, we can have so, some support. Because we put, for Congo Brazzaville, we put all tools. And for this year, we need to have evaluation. Yeah. And we want to know if you, you can help the country will finish uh, uh, the tool to, to uh, the uh, whole things of the tool if we can have evaluation to, to, to have the support for evaluation. Yeah. This is a question that we want yeah. to know. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to congratulate you with your English because it's better than my <laughs> French. It's better than my French. Secondly, I want to congratulate both of us because this afternoon we will have a bilateral and let us put it on the, on the bilateral because this is a very specific uh, question. But we are, ha we are very happy to, to deal uh, uh, with it uh, this afternoon. Yeah? All right. Let me ask the representative of PATH, Mr. Cyril, Cyril Engman. Uh, PATH, please stand up and tell us what you can do can mean for our uh, countries, uh, country team, if uh, they want to have your help. So first of all, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Cyril Engman. Um, I'm the Global Program Leader for Maternal Newborn Child Health and Nutrition, and by way of background, I'm a pediatrician and neonatologist as well, and a professor of um, public health. Um, in 2013, with funding by DFID, um, we established the Maximizing the Quality of the Scale-Up of Nutrition Project. Some of you might know this as MQ Sun, and um, I happen to be privileged to be the senior partner on this. And what MQ Sun, now in its second iteration, called MQ Sun Plus, does, is provide technical assistance. And we provide technical assistance in over 12 different areas, whether it's multi-sectoral nutritional activity plans, whether it's budgeting and financing, whether it's advocacy and policy, whether it's bottleneck analyses, I could go on and on. And actually, if you want to learn more, on Wednesday and on Thursday morning, during the country dialogues, we're going to have an in-depth conversation about that. So just so you know, so the other types of things that we're able to do, and the mechanism, as you've heard um, Gerda say, is that you co connect with the Secretariat, and then they uh, connect with us, MQ Sun Plus. Now, in the last uh, iteration, what has happened is, uh, as part of DFID's mechanism, they've also engaged uh, Emergency Network and Nutrition International to join what's called the Technical Assistance for Nutrition Group. So now there's a larger consortium that can bring and provide even more assistance on the technical front. Um, I think I'll stop there because yes, I, I'm please, happy to ask Yes, please, because um, it is um, important that country teams who want to get some poor support are very clear in their demand. 
It's That's not correct. that you offer a lot. It, is, uh, it has to be tailor-made. What is the challenge? What is the specific questions, question in your country? And how can we support you to tackle it yourself? Because time and again, let me emphasize it, it's ownership and capacity building at country level. I yeah. couldn't emphasize that more. It's tailor-made and country-led, country-driven, yeah. and so absolutely to that point. And so we get very specific, very clear, and laser-like and fo focus in what we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I noticed that somebody raised his hand. You raised your hand, no? No? Okay, yes, sir, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm from Ghana. I work with Water Aid. I think the point about financing uh, nutrition is very, very important. But we need to take a step back and look at some of the things that would make it easy for governments to invest in nutrition. And one of them is to make sure that the planning guidelines, budget guidelines are nutrition sensitive. Until that is done, you know, government will not have that channel to put in money and civil society organizations will lose out when it comes to implementation. But I think we need to make sure that the networks in country are vibrant and visible. If they are, it becomes very easy for the different actors to go to them, as opposed to they searching for them to come together. So let's see how the communications bit can make the civil society uh, coalitions or platforms on nutrition in country very visible and very vibrant. I think, okay. sir, that you make an important uh, point. No, 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 keep the micro, keep the micro, because I have a question for you. Because you make a very important uh, point here, but making this point, I'm quite sure that you did something already to make it uh, uh, happen. How did you manage to get this nutritious sensitive framework? We managed to get an external contact to link us up with the national group. And then we had a number of bilateral meetings with them. And only a couple of weeks ago, they started an advocacy campaign, call it an initiative, where they asked at least 30 international organizations to write a very simple letter of interest, which they are going to use to get the National Development Planning Commission to make the planning guidelines, and we have a five-year planning cycle, to make those planning guidelines uh, nutrition sensitive. You see, take the initiative, make sure that you have a connection with your national development plan. That is key, I would say, and that is core. Um, I mentioned the example already from Ivory Coast, there are more uh, countries which have, who have um, nutrition at the heart of the national development plan, but it should be, should, be, should be indeed core to the national development plan because around this development uh, plan it's um, it's easier to get domestic uh, uh, investments, and once you have domestic investments, you see that members of parliament are stepping up because they want to oversee what is happening uh, out there. They will make sure that it will be submitted, that the budget will be submitted and invest, uh, invested, etc. Then we need, of course, the capacity building where uh, civil society, but also UN, and donors are crucial, uh, capacity building for implementation, data collection, and all what is uh, there, uh, and then you can move on and move up. All right, I'm looking around because I have more, one more question to ask here, and then we go to the people uh, to see whether there are questions at, uh, at the social media. Um, Last year, we were requested to step up in two new fields. Let me elaborate a little bit uh, on this. The first new field is the field of fragility. 15 out of 60 um, Sun Movement countries are, have, a, have a kind of fragility. Um, human uh, made, created, or nature, climate uh, uh, created. And we were um, requested to, as a follow-up of the Istanbul summit, the humanitarian summit, to see whether the Sun Movement networks in countries could play a role in bridging the humanitarian and development part. And that's easier said than done. But we are taking this in a very serious way because 15 out of 60 
is 25% uh, of our countries, and that's a lot. So what we are sorting out right now is we are visiting uh, countries, we're working with UN organizations, with civil society organizations, and see whether, for instance, the needs assessment at country level can be done, including the networks that are already there, so that the humanitarian support is not a standalone support, uh, making their own needs assessment, but that they are including the departments and the people and the networks that are already there. And that is of crucial uh, importance. So that is one remark. There is one new part of uh, work. The second part of work is the, the multiple burden of malnutrition. And I would like to uh, uh, request one of the communication team members to elaborate a little bit on how we envisage this. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Gerda. Um, as Gerda mentioned, uh, the Sun Movement, since uh, it developed its new strategy and roadmap, which extends from 2016 to 2020, um, included a focus on tackling overweight, obesity, and non-communicable diseases. Uh, this is recognizing that undernutrition and um, the form, other forms of malnutrition are intimately connected. More and more sun countries are choosing to focus on overweight, obesity and NCDs in their country national nutrition plans. And there's a lot of lessons that can be learnt from those different countries. But more and more the sun movement is trying to become a platform for helping countries showcase how they're un addressing undernutrition while also showcasing the other forms of malnutrition as well too. And the Sun Networks are also making quite a strong effort to make sure that this is a key focus of their work for us. I love the jingle, but... It is. It's a very nice ringtone. But, <laughs> but so, for example, um, um, one of our networks, the Sun Business Network, um, will be looking at its membership, for example, to ensure that each of the companies in their membership are also focusing on issues related to diet-related NCDs, overweight and obesity. So this is quite a change. Uh, for the Sun Movement, and it appreciates the fact that everybody has a need to learn how different countries are tac tackling different forms of malnutrition at the same time. So increasingly we're inviting countries um, that are addressing overweight and NCDs to share their experiences with other Sun member countries that have an increasing um, uh, burden of overweight and um, obesity and NCDs. Thanks, Gerda. Okay, thank you very much, and this new initiative we um, want to do it under the Sustainable Development Goal number 17. Countries standing shoulder to shoulder, learn from each other, but under government uh, ownership. It's important and um, the multiple burden of malnutrition, obesity, non-communicable diseases, um, it is dealt with also during the World Health Assembly. Um, as we know, WHO is an important partner uh, of the Sun Movement, together with World Food Programme, UNICEF, FAO and uh, IFED, and also OCHA is, uh, is uh, around and working with the Sun Movement, if appropriate, just like other organizations. I have a look at the time. I'm also a time manager uh, here. I would like to look around whether there are other topics to be raised. Yes. Ah. from WHO. Please stand up. Thank you, Herda. My name is Lina Mai. I'm working in the Department of Nutrition at WHO. Um, this week um, we have two nutrition items on the agenda, but we have also a, a draft resolution uh, that um, was um, developed and negotiated the text uh, the weeks before the World Health Assembly now. Um, we do have some issues now of getting it tabled. I, if you don't mind, I would like to give uh, the floor to my colleague Larry Grammerstron, who is uh, the responsible pr uh, officer in our department, because we need help from the Sun countries. Yeah, only if Larry can do it in a very summarized and catchy way. Very quickly, the resolution has gone through four negotiating sessions and was closed up on basically all the text marked in green. But Ecuador has had to pull back from tabling the resolution, so it is not officially on the docket for the assembly. We need another country, either one that's already co-sponsoring or another that would like to be listed as a, a sponsor, to step up and table the resolution before close of business today. 
If you'd like more information about how to do that or what exactly it entails, um, please see me after the session. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you so much for making your pitch. I'll come back to you because I promised to give you the floor back, but I'm also extremely happy to welcome our focal point from Afghanistan. Sure. Yes. Give me a... <laughs> Good. You, would you like to take the floor? We're just introducing and warming up for our Scaling Up Nutrition uh, Hub. And we do it all in an informal way, but we wanted to recognize Afghanistan also as the, as the youngest and the sixtieth uh, member country of the, of the Sun Movement. Thank you, Gerda. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I had to uh, look and search for this place, like for one hour. Uh, nobody could help me, but finally I got here. Uh, I'm also happy to see you all. Uh, as uh, Gerda mentioned, Afghanistan became the sixtieth member of uh, Sun Movement just uh, in September last year. Uh, after we joined this movement, we started to form the uh, uh, coordination platform uh, in which uh, for stakeholders, they are members, and uh, we have uh, a high-level steering committee, which is uh, chaired by the CEO, means the Minister President of Afghanistan. Uh, recently, we had our first uh, high-level steering committee meeting. We had uh, uh, different decisions, and uh, every month we got also an executive committee meeting, we got uh, four uh, working groups. Uh, one of the working group is development partners group. So uh, in the short term, we were able to just uh, have our orientation and uh, set up the structures in place. We have also started uh, uh, working on, with the help of Sun Movement and also DFID to uh, uh, develop our strategic plan. So uh, I'm here now uh, in the hope to learn from you people, for the countries who have already uh, made experience. Uh, malnutrition in Afghanistan is one of the biggest problems, especially uh, 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 stunting and also women are uh, suffering a lot. Uh, poverty, as you people know, recently there was a report 54.5% of poverty level. Thank you very much, uh, and I'm looking forward to learn from you. Thank you very much, and very good that you could make it. Our delegation from Lesotho, I promise to give you back the floor. Yeah? Please. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. It's, yeah, it's mm. My name is Lesotho Tinani from Lesotho, Principal Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister. Um, I come here along with my minister, who has just gone out, so I'm taking over from him. Um, Lesotho valued very much uh, the, the Office of Nutrition, call it National Nutrition Coordinating Officer. So it coordinates all the centers, all the big centers in the country, where unfortunately we have only one person who is uh, working from there. But uh, in our capital, Maseru, we have about uh, five, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm okay, five staff members. That in itself shows uh, the dedication and commitment from the government. It is still in, in its infant stage. We've just started uh, the office and uh, uh, we hope, listening to what uh, members are saying here, we are still in the, in the, we are in the right track. We will, will get to where all others have gone. Yes, like my friend here indicated, nutrition has become a worldwide problem, uh, particularly in the developing countries. Uh, we, we have a serious problem of malnutrition. Yes, I'm told here by my technocrats that uh, um, there seemed to be decline for the past probably two years after the, the program, school feeding program, uh, from 40% down to 34%. Uh, it shows that uh, 
at least there is an improvement in the right direction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I can only, I can only emphasize uh, this. During our, our visit last year, we noticed, and your, you and your team are working uh, very hard and with a lot of uh, dedication. But it's with nutrition, it's never done. It, uh, it requests um, dedication, awareness of the government, and very often we see that members of government um, are aware of the physical impact of malnutrition and not of the cognitive um, part of, uh, of malnutrition. And if you start to tell members of parliament or uh, members of a government that the first thousand days from the day of pregnancy until the second birthday are of crucial importance for the cognitive development, uh, then you see suddenly something changing because people start to understand how this impacts. So the best impact that you can do also from your domestic budget is not in creating roads or big buildings, but in creating the best human infrastructure. Now having said this, I look around whether there are still Sir, you have something? Yeah? No? You're just appointed to take the floor. If you don't want to take the floor, yes. Very good. Uh, uh, first, I want to apologize me because I want to, to speak in French. Yes. You can, you, can, you can speak in English because we have two people who do the interpretation and many of us uh, speak. Uh, you can do but it. I'm not good in, in English. Ah, okay. I want to try now. Yeah. Please. So um, it's not a question, but I want to, want to give uh, the situation in my country. I am honest, the focal point in the Burundi government. Kay. I am the deputy chief cabinet of the second vice president. Speak a little bit loud out no. and look around. Yes. Um, I'm saying that um, uh, Enes and Yokindi from Burundi as a focal point of the movement, the Sun movement. Also, I'm the deputy chief cabinet of the second vice president. And as I'm saying that uh, we have uh, made our decision on, on, uh, on uh, some movement in uh, 2013, and uh, we have uh, in Burundi in the, uh, a platform which is uh, mid sector and it is based in, this, in the second vice president's president. So uh, by there, it arose, it arose to coordinate some activities yeah. through our minister, um, minister, ministers. I mean, the Minister of Health is the vice president of the platform, and the, the Minister of Agriculture is the secretary. So okay. by there, we, ca we coordinate our activities in our minister, ministries. So um, about uh, problems in coordinating, the first problem is uh, the financing, the finance, how to finance those activities in coordinating that. Also, um, if we, uh, we want to see how is the level of malnutrition is uh, around the 56% of malnutrition, uh, chronic, chronic malnutrition. So, um, as we have already seen that, uh, the problem is that uh, to sensitize population is uh, somehow to Make to approach them by making some uh, decentralization yeah. of the national platform. Yeah. So now we're trying to implement yeah. the, plat the, the platform in our provinces yeah. in order to approach the population. Yeah. I'm quite sure that you have much more to share with us, but I will invite you to. Um, uh, who, is the, who is the country liaison? Morgan. Morgan, yes. Yeah. Uh, well. So keep an eye on her. She's uh, already extremely busy, but have a bite with her and a drink in, during the lunch because we don't want to stand between all of us and the informal network since we invited you for a reception. I would like to team to start the video because we would like to end with the video unless we have a burning question from social media, which is not the case. There, should, there is a video. Yeah. The video. A video. Yes. We used to have some nice music. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is what we what we used to have Thank you very much. That's our, that's our joint ambition. So let's work together, uh, sort out who you'd like to uh, meet with today uh, before the end of this uh, reception, which, yeah, there we go, again. Um, um, sort out who you'd like to, uh, to meet in a bilateral way, enjoy our food and drinks, and feel welcome to um, Enjoy also the out outside atmosphere at this beautiful uh, palais. Um, but continue to do the informal networking and take good care of your nutrition. And thank you very much for joining this opening session. Woo!